Celtic world has more than its share of the supernatural, legends, and myth, which sometimes cross the line into reality. I tell those tales here on Dark Celtic History. <laughs> the Tom, Mother and Baby Home. 1970s Ireland. Catholic priests were still telling girls not to wear miniskirts in public, as though they were a biblical harlot about to be cast out and stoned to death. You know the scene. Two school lads are out playing in a field in Ireland in the mid-1970s, when they find a big stone. Being mischievous boys, they work harder than they've ever worked before in their lives, and they lift that stone, only to discover it covered a hole that they were all too eager to climb in, despite the danger. Stephen King's stories start this way, with two innocents uncovering something horrifying. But this wasn't fiction. This wasn't some made-up story on the supermarket shelves. It was Tom, County Galway in 1975. And the hundreds of little skeletons the two boys found in a disused sewage tank were all too real. The Catholic Church held incredible influence over Ireland at this time and the fact that 796 babies' remains were just found at the Tom Mother and Baby Home run by the church had little impact. The clerical word was the last word, and the people fell into line, and the atrocities the church committed were lost to time. That explains why you could uncover a grave of almost 800 dead infants in a disused sewage tank in the 1970s and yet a great silence would descend over and cover it all up. The Pope was infallible. Then so was the church and all of its agents. There was nothing to see here. You can go on about your business, move along. So people did, they moved along and they kept on moving. But time brings change. And change, well, change opens minds that were thought to be nailed shut and thrown down a well. The Catholic Church was not interested in having this discussion, and so a a huge silence descended over Ireland once again. People often vanished into that huge silence, I discovered. All kinds of people, people who didn't fit the story that the country was telling about itself. Unmarried mothers, children born out of wedlock, the children of the poor and the addicted, the mentally ill and the disabled. You could find yourself unfamilied and warehoused in some gloomy institution with high walls and stern nuns where you could vanish for years, decades, even forever. It happened to tens of thousands of Irish people. It happened to the most vulnerable. They were ruthlessly cast out, sent off stage to be silenced, and hopefully disappear. It was always for their own good, never for ours. That's what we told ourselves. Of course they knew. They simply did what people did when confronted by abject horror. They shuddered and thanked the stars it was happening to someone else, not them. It was always fear, not piety, that kept their mouths shut. To believe that the little bodies would be exhumed after they were discovered in a mass grave there, well, was just a foolish thought. Let them rest in peace and silence. A young nun who returned to the site years later to pray for forgiveness for her actions, or rather her inaction in the matter, knelt near the stone monument and prayed. She thought about the young mothers who thought their babies had been given to loving, caring families, who in reality had been thrown into a disused sewage tank alive because it was inconvenient. Abortion was an abomination, but murder that, that seemed okay. Letting a newborn baby starve to death was somehow acceptable. A woman who had given her life in the service of God knew she had done wrong. Even if she had not cast out the babies herself, she was culpable because, well, she knew. This is why she was here. She begged for forgiveness from her God every day, but living so far away in America was not far enough. It didn't seem to be enough. She needed to be here on this sacred ground and feel the tremors of unspeakable acts flow through her. 
She needed to wail in pain. She needed to forgive herself. As night begins to fall on her vigil, she lights a candle and continues. However, she cannot escape the feeling of dread and the eeriness of her situation as light fades into darkness. She is often awakened abruptly from a nightmare in which the babies climb out of the sewage tank and come after her, ripping her flesh from her body and pulling her underground to join them in the hell she helped make for them. She looks around and a bead of sweat rolls down her cheek as her situation is reminiscent of her ghoulish nightmares. The next morning, passerbys notice the young nun slumped over near the monument thinking she's just asleep. They roll her over and to their horror, she's dead. Dead at 40 years of age of a massive heart attack. She looks so innocent lying there and the only marks on her body are little handprints upon her cheeks. Years later, it seems, the babies of Tom want their story told. Yeah, yeah.